reports of this channel's demise have been greatly exaggerated. Jeez, you take a couple of days off and people are asking, what happened? Did the channel die as he stopped doing? I just took a few days off from doing videos for crying out loud. Get a break every once in a while. For some of you, probably not a long enough break, but hey, I'm here. I'm a survivor. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this Q&A video done. I'm a little bit behind the eight ball on it. Well, <laughs> what a surprise. And let's see if we can have just a teensy weensy itty little bit of fun here. Is if you can even have fun anymore. All right, let's get started. Mounties Corner asks, should Double J manage the B team and call them Double B? What he should do, what you should do, is form a tag team called Fuck and You. Fuck you. Now obviously this is some sick twisted attempt at Canadian humor. And how do you know he is Canadian? I mean, not only did he name himself after the Mountie, pretty bad giveaway, but the pudgy face, the love for walking around in tight pants in the snow, and the borderline neck beard pretty much get the job done for you and an almost creepy fascination with Randall Keith Orton. Pretty much cinches it. I ask you, Mountie, how does it feel as a Canadian to watch the Stanley Cup Finals and know that it is a team from Washington, D.C. and a team, an expansion team, mind you, from Las Vegas, Nevada, the fucking desert, playing in the Stanley Cup Finals? Marca. How does it feel to know that another one of your country's sports curling saw the Americans win the gold. The American boys brought home gold. Like, you should be ashamed of yourselves. You should be disappointed. You should have to go on a temporary hiatus from being able to watch Strange Brew, which is clearly something you would have to envision all Canadians do. Uh, drinking Molson or Labatt, Labatt, whatever the hell. You gotta stop doing that. You know, just go... Jump in a mound of snow. Surely somewhere up there, you mother canuckers, there has to be some type of snow there. You can go jump in a bank. And when in doubt, drown your sorrows in the legalized marijuana and maple syrup bongs that you clearly have up there. Goddamn double J questions. Kiss my ass. Kieran Chase. Would you hate double J less if he hadn't created two wrestling companies try and make himself world champion. Kieran, let us back up for just a second. The first question I have for you is what the hell is a brony? I know what it is, but what the hell is a brony? And more specifically, why the hell are you a brony? To be a brony is to be a jabroni, period. And you dare to ask me about the Memphis mid-card piece of crap? Would I hate him less? Probably. I would just hate him. Not like revile the very thought of him and what he's brought to the wrestling world over the years. Does that make you happy? Now you can go wait outside some damn toy store and wait for the next release of My Little Pony because it's hot. Bronies. What the hell's a brony? WNC Podcast. Will there ever be a part two of an interview with you and the Sala Monster? Who knows? I would have no trouble with it. No problem with it at all. You ask, maybe even being on his show? Who knows? The soothing Sala monster is probably too big time for little old Schleg Daddy now. So, why not? I always say this. I'd be willing to interview anybody that would make for an interesting listen. Even if it's somebody I completely and totally disagree with wholeheartedly. Not saying that's the case of Solid Monster, because it most certainly is not. Um, but always be willing to do something for a YouTube or a podcast with the soothing Solid Monster, indeed. Um, and will you ever maybe do a guest spot on Wrestling Soup? Yes. Absolutely. I'm sure, I'm sure the guys there would not have a problem with that. Nor would I. That would be on a lot of fun. I'm sure we can make it happen. Gooner Eagle Eye asks, 
when will you be on Wrestling Sue? You know what? Here's what you do. You ask me like I'm in charge of the booking committee for Wrestling Soup. You ask me like I am the HNIC of all that you see and hear when it comes to Wrestling Soup. Reach out to Joey Numbers and whoever is not Joey Numbers that does that damn show. And you ask them to get me on. That's what you do. That's what you do. And maybe then it can happen. Just saying. Michael Corvin asks... If fans walk out during the Jinder and Roman match at Money in the Bank, does it hurt WWE's publicity, or is walking out of the event you paid for stupid? I've talked about this before. It's stupid. You really don't send much of a message. And even when you hear reports talking about Reigns and Samoa Joe, fans are walking out, and Vince is wondering what's going on. This is one of these things where it doesn't matter He's going to blame Samoa Joe. You get what I'm saying? Like Survivor Series 2011. You remember the, the Miz Truth versus Rock and Cena tag match? The match has The Rock. The match has Cena. And yet we're blaming The Miz and our truth because the buy rate wasn't great for the pay-per-view. No. The buy rate was supposed to be built on the backs of The Rock and John Cena both appearing and then also tag teaming together. The buy rate was soft because Rock and Cena made the buy rate soft. Stop looking for other people to blame, but that's what Vince does. As far as the whole thing of, I'm going to send a message by walking out again for an event you already fucking paid to get into, you stupid idiots. They've got your money. And if we're talking about normal like forms of entertainment, they might eventually care. The WWE does not. Why? Because it already got your money. And especially on the heels of the new television deals for Raw and SmackDown, you think they'll give a shit? Shh. Ease. Yeah, walking on an event you paid for is stupid. The way you protest is to not show up to the event at all. Or if you do show up, instead of being the dumb dicks that wrestling fans seem to always be determined to be and doing a bunch of hijacking and a bunch of other crap that the WWE will try to spin and then eventually censor out of the replays anyway so you accomplish nothing, the best thing you could do is be completely and totally quiet and make no reaction whatsoever. It's when you make no reaction at all that the WWE is petrified because, as I've talked about for years now, they have convinced themselves they are not in the heel face business they are in the reaction business and when you don't give a reaction that's when they really start to take notice and say oh my god they will talk about you walking out or hijacking and talk about that's fans doing whatever the hell they want we can't control that but you stay disciplined enough to not make a sound to sit on your hands that's when they might care a little bit but of course wrestling fans are too stupid to ever organize something intelligent like that They'll go the other way because they're dumb dicks. They do dumb dick things, and then the dumb dicks are surprised when their dumb dick shit doesn't work. Gee, I wonder why. Brian Walmer. Have you had any thoughts of doing live Google Hangouts with any of the old OTRS members? Sure. Thought about it before, even talked about it a little bit at one point in time. It's just hard to coordinate different schedules and everything, but never say never. EPW Show. What would you like to see from the All In show? I don't even know that I'm going to watch it. Have they even talked about if it's going to be available on iPay-Per-View or anything like that or regular pay-per-view? I'm not sure and I don't know that I particularly care. Um, from a fair and objective standpoint, I'd like to see the show actually legitimately be filled with 10,000 wrestling fans because somebody outside of a major company being able to put that many legit fans that actually paid to get into the show into a show like that would be a really really good thing for the business on the flip side of that cody being the cock sucking lying son of a bitch that he is i wish the event would fail miserably it won't because if for no other reason than people are being so giggly tits about oh my good and you see him punk with a pew and do that this is awesome it's the greatest thing ever until the next time something like this happens and then you'll be the greatest thing ever stupid cocksucker oh i'm gonna brag about how i went my own even though you gotta dye your hair like your fucking daddy you gotta sit there and call yourself the american nightmare to try and rip off from your daddy you pathetic piece of shit 
Fuck him. Karma will collect on his ass some days when Brandy leaves his dumb ass because she gets too big for her britches or he does something stupid. He's one of those people I look at right now and you hear people talk about, oh, I don't wish injury. Oh, fuck that shit. I mean, that son of a bitch was wrestling and he broke his ankle and he was out six months to a year. I'd be like, serves your punk ass right. Fuck him. And would I tell him to his face? Absolutely. What the fuck's he going to do? Fuck him. American Alucard. Why does the internet think the X division is the cruiserweight division? I understand what you're saying. You had guys like Samoa Joe in there. Wasn't Kevin Nash X division champion at some point in time? It was not supposed to be about weight limits. It was what? No limits. That was the old tagline. But if we're being realistic here, the majority of the people in the X division were under like 250 pound, 15 pound midgets. I mean, that's what it was. It kind of became a de facto cruiserweight division in a lot of ways. I understand what you're saying. Exceptions to the rule. But who fucking cares? I miss the old TNA. That even when it would do stupid crap, it was like it was so bad and it was so stupid it was still comical and it was a lot of fun to rip on it. Just doesn't do anything for me anymore. Maybe I'll give them a shot. Are they even doing a Slammiversary show, Alucard? Are they? If they are, I haven't seen anything. I'm assuming so, but I could be wrong. Why don't you Why don't you let me know in the comments if they're actually doing a Slammiversary? Because if they are, you know what? I probably will try and watch it. Give them another shot. King David. How the hell did the spinner belt last so long? It's called Merch Money. They sold a lot of those stupid little spinner belts. As a result, if you were a business and the spinner belt continues to bring you money for years, why in the hell would you go away from it? They made a lot of money off of that belt design. It's probably one of the more successful pieces of merch they've had in a long time. That's why it was offered for so long. Plain and simple. Money, money, money. And WWE loves that merch money because merch is a very big profit maker for them. So you sell a lot of those belts and a lot of things with the belt's likeness on it. It's going to be around for a long time. As annoying as it was. Horror Movie Review 73. Would the Tensai character work better if it was portrayed by a Japanese wrestler? We're talking about WWE. It probably would have worked out even worse. Would he have been fucking Kabushi or something? Or whatever the fuck his name was from the 90s. God, not Kabut. Oh my god. Damn, I'm starting to get old. I'm forgetting guys' names and shit, but... You, you get what I'm saying. Blast me for forgetting the kid. Who gives a shit? And, and... We look at the way they generally have treated Japanese wrestlers over the years. Like, even when you talk about Nakamura. They pushed him to a point, but they won't put the world strap on him. So no, I don't think it would have been any better. It probably would have been worse if that is possible. 1983, Jason. Thoughts on what the NWA has done so far? What have they done? What are they doing? And I don't ask that to be a smart ass. I ask that because I'm not paying attention. I don't know. What have they done? What are they doing? Maybe you could clue me in. Maybe I will check it out. Char Char. Can you see Disney buying WWE when the old man dies? Um... They could. They absolutely could. Especially if they end up with Fox. Um, it figures. You want to be family friendly? Well, you get you get bought by Disney. You want to talk about Mickey Mouse operations? Well, there you freaking go. So it's absolutely possible. Uh, Ahmed. Will the WWE ruin Drew McIntyre again? Signs point to yes. Because here's the thing. Even if you want to believe. Even if you stubbornly want to hold out hope. The fuck makes anybody think that this company is going to get anything right in terms of a character? And if they've screwed him up once. What's to say they don't screw him up even worse the second time? Sure, you could talk about, well, Jinder Mahal didn't do shit the first time, and the second time he comes back, and they push him like he matters, and they still push him like he matters, and they put the world strap on him and everything. 
Yeah, but they were trying to target a market with over 1.3 billion people, which is not something that Drew McIntyre can appeal to. They pushed Jinder Mahal specifically because of his background, because of his ethnicity. They're not going to do that with Drew. So I have full confidence they will do everything they can to eventually screw it up. Mr. Tuxedo, if you could make one video knowing the world would watch, what would you talk about? Like everybody in the whole world would watch. Like every single buddy. That is a great question. That is a great question. I would probably go through a lot of details. Hmm. I don't know. That is an excellent question. If I could make one video knowing the world would watch, what would you talk about? Hmm. I don't know. I absolutely don't know. I'll have to think about that and get back to you. Dylan Schwartz, agree or disagree? Samoa Joe is now an elite talker and an okay wrestler. Agree. Whereas he used to be, I think you pointed out, more of an elite wrestler and just an okay talker, I think it's flipped the other way. So I think Samoa Joe is more interesting than he's been in a very, very long time. Because he's been fire on the point. He's been money to me on the mic. In ring, eh, kind of so-so. But I would rather have that combination than the other one, personally. That's just me, though. Uh, Eric Dennis, would Owen Hart have been world champion if he didn't die? No. As you already talked about 1999, they weren't going to make him a world champion. He would have been a solid contributor on the mid-card throughout the remainder of the Attitude Era, but he wasn't going to be world champ. If he was going to technically been world champ, it would have happened more so post-Attitude Era, 2003-2004, as you're working Austin Rock out the door. You've got Owen Hart there. Uh, you might have went for some type of, oh, he's never had it before. So instead of Triple H and Shawn Michaels wrestling a triple threat against an invisible man for the World Heavyweight Championship in the main event of WrestleMania 20 at the Madison Square Garden, it may very well have been Owen Hart in that position. So that could have been a possibility, but it wouldn't have been during the Attitude Era for sure. And even then, I'm not sure they would have ever went there. Uh, Sam Katz asks, will you be covering the XFL? The XFL actually has to come to be first. And at that point in 2020, we'll see. I don't know right now. Mason Clark, do you have any advice on positive thinking? How do I do it? That's funny. You ask me, somebody who is known for being very negative about professional wrestling, thoughts on advice on positive thinking, and how do you do it? Well, I will point this out. Is what I do on here is not always an accurate representation of Jeff and not actually who I necessarily always am. Sometimes that means in one direction, sometimes that means in another direction. But when you talk about positive thinking... I think, especially if you're somebody that looks at the world video very cynically, uh, have a very jaded perspective, whether it's merited or not, um, and you tend to focus on what's wrong, it, it, it's human nature. We gravitate towards negativity. We harp on and we focus on negativity. You see that on social media. You see that on a lot of the most watched videos on YouTube. They're epic fails, they're blunders, they're errors, they're all those type of things. Or people doing and saying really bad, dumb shit. Um... So it's tough because it goes against our human nature. But talking about positive thinking, when you think about it from like a business standpoint, are you going to focus on the problem or are you going to focus on the solution? And it feels like when you focus more on the solution instead of the problem and you can start to solve problems, you naturally will generally become a little bit more positive. And it could take time. Um, it takes a little bit of work effort, time, but eventually it starts reprogramming you to say, hey, eh, I don't know if I got any money for this, eh, but I can do this. Or maybe if I shift this or I do this, I'll be able to do that. You know, or this or that. You start focusing on not the barriers, but the problem solving and the solutions. It naturally helps you to be a little bit more positive if for no other reason. You could still acknowledge and complain about a problem, but still ultimately say, you know what, it is what it is, and I'm going to go and do something about it. I'm going to fix it. Some people are just more naturally positive than others, but sometimes total positive thinking 
can lead to people being very vulnerable too because they can be incredibly dumb and naive about things. And you sit there and look at them sometimes and be like, how stupid can you be? How can you not see this? But, you know, it's like it's a blessing and a curse to have the innocence of always looking at the bright side of things. And the truth of the matter is, sometimes life is not always positive. You can con yourself and trick yourself into believing it, but it doesn't necessarily make it true. Um, but you have to want to think more positively. You have to do something about it. And every once in a while, when you see something and you're like, oh, I don't know if I really like that or I think that's stupid, where you think about how you would have reacted in the past, try not saying anything. Or try instead first, like I talked about, focusing on the solutions, focusing on problem solving. That will certainly help. Also, from a positive thinking standpoint, it helps if you get laid consistently and it helps if you have enough money to be able to afford a quality of life. You know, people could talk about, well, money doesn't make the man and money can't buy you happiness. Yeah, you know what? That's something broke people say to tell themselves that it doesn't matter. No, you don't have to be a millionaire to be happy in this world. You don't even necessarily have to make $100,000 a year to be happy in this world. But you probably need to make enough money to be able to afford a decent place, maybe a decent vehicle, and have a few nice things. That will help you be happy because if you're always broken, you're always struggling to pay bills, and you're always buried in debt, and you're always behind, how the fuck are you going to be happy? And what the hell do you have to be happy about? So that's just some of what you can think about, Mason, okay? Just think about some of that stuff. But your attitude creates your altitude. You probably will hear that in the working world a lot or some configuration of that. You make your reality, fake it till you make it if you need to, but your attitude creates your altitude. All right. Danny boy, why does WWE want to be a movie company and get mad when wrestlers leave to go do movies? Uh, because they're mad that those wrestlers aren't staying to do their crappy WWE Studios movies. But even then, ultimately... You know, you look at somebody like The Rock, if anything is a way you can spin it to appeal to people that normally wouldn't have gotten into the wrestling business that are very, but are very talented or maybe great actors, um, by saying, hey, you come work here for X number of years, we can make you a star, and then you can go back to Hollywood and you become an even bigger star. Um, so if anything, if you want to focus on the positive of things you could use that as a huge asset and say hey look at the movie scene is in now look at the movies the rock is in look at the movies batista is in you come here we can help make some of that happen for you that should potentially be a positive for wwe the problem is is that you create a cycle of every five to seven years you're cycling through a roster but that's the reality of what they're going to have to do long term anyways so you might as well use every asset or every positive to your advantage Jesse McRae, do you feel like Enzo was unfairly treated and unfairly hated by fans? Well, how is he? I don't know if he was unfairly treated. He was consistently booked in preeminent spots on the television product, given mic time, actually allowed to develop some type of character, hone some type of character, showcase some type of character. He was given a Cruiserweight Championship. They were clearly trying to build that 205 Live brand around him, which is exactly what it needed at that time. Uh, but if you're talking about the uh, termination being unfair, well, it's a funny thing about that is, one, he's technically an in independent contractor, so you really classify that as self-employed. They didn't fire him. They just terminated the contract. There's a difference. Um, but why they fired him at will, they can fire him for whatever the fuck reason, fair or not, doesn't really matter. But you know, it's one of those things that he was being a problem, being a pain in the ass. So eventually the company kind of got fucking tired of that and I get it and I understand it, but they deal with other people that generate issues that don't make them money. So I don't know why they wouldn't hear. Uh, was he unfairly hated by fans? I think there are a lot and plenty of fans that liked Enzo. There are also fans that didn't. If they hated him because they thought his character was annoying, I don't think that's unfair. If they hated him because they thought he was a D-bag based off of the reports, that may be fair or not. But for, let's face it, the way he kind of conducted and more importantly carried himself, it made you believe that he was a bit of a D-bag. So I don't think he was unfairly hated. I don't think he was unfairly hated at all. And I don't think he was unfairly treated either. I don't think so. 
Jason Rodman, what wrestlers have you met in person and were any of them dicks? Um, uh, Road Warrior Animal, JBL, Jim Ross, Baron Von Raschke, Larry the Axe Hennig, Danny Hodge, you know, other wrestling type people, Jim Ross, Jerry Briscoe, uh, who the heck else? Who the heck else? Hacksaw Jim Duggan, he was awesome. Animal was awesome. Um, I've met other wrestlers over the years in different ways. Uh, the only one that kind of rubbed me the wrong way was, man, Colt Cabana was always pretty cool. Um, I think the one wrestler that ever rubbed me the wrong way was Perry Saturn. And, like, to me, his, that cross-eyed fuck, I could care less. Like, if he didn't talk to me, I don't care. But we didn't, there was the one Hall of Fame show, I think it was in 2012, and... He, he shows up and he gets on top of the table and he's walking around being a D-bag. And then people are trying to talk to him. After, mind you, he showed up late to the show anyways. And he just kind of, he maybe he was having a bad day. So I'm just going based off of my personal experience of what I observed. And people are trying to say things to him. And it's like, you know, it's not about you, you stupid douche. It is about the museum in the Dan Gable Museum in Waterloo, Iowa. It's about the Trago Stez Hall of Fame weekend. Stop being a D-bag. And be nice to the people. It's not that hard. And he just came off like a dick. That he didn't want to be bothered there. That he had one eye looking this way. One eye looking that way. He didn't know what the fuck he was doing. So fuck him. That would be the only one though. Like you might be surprised. Like I said JBL. JBL was very decent to me. I was very decent to him. We had some very good conversations. That Chris Christie loving motherfucker. Um... But no, he was a good conversation. We talked about some interesting issues. Um, but everybody else, you know, nothing but good things to say about JR. And even the one year in 2011, he brought his wife Jan. Well, uh, ironically now, the guys and I all kind of thought that she had the hots for the Schlage Daddy. And I'm not making that up. You can ask Mr. Route. You can ask Tony. Just saying. Um, I'm a handsome fellow. What more can you say? Rest in peace. Ah, that still sucks. Can you imagine losing your wife like that? Ugh. Yeah, I feel so bad for Jim. I really, really do. But Jim was always really nice and decent to me. Um, Jerry Briscoe's always been great and wonderful. Danny Hodge was a sweetheart of a guy. Baron Von Raschke was a good dude. Um, great character. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan was outstanding in person. Um, so pretty much everybody wrestler wise that I've had interactions with face to face animal was outstanding I remember him riding in the front seat in Mr. Routes car as we were taking him from the hotel to the museum for the Saturday morning stuff uh, <laughs> the, at least through that museum and other places I met him like working at when I was running the Foot Locker store I've met wrestlers over the years and so on and so forth uh, mostly good experiences now, granted, I'm not sitting there creeping on wrestlers at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning at airports trying to get autographs. Um, getting autographs is not necessarily a huge deal. I would rather have like a 3 or 5 minute conversation with somebody. Maybe take a picture, maybe not, you know, depending on their mood. But I'd rather just have a conversation with them. It doesn't even necessarily have to pertain to wrestling. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had lots of good experiences with uh, people that I met. Lots of good experiences. So, um to be fair though I haven't met a super ton of wrestlers either so um but most everybody that I've encountered has been pretty good you know the one that wasn't so much and now like I said give benefit of the doubt maybe it was just a bad day maybe he didn't have his pain meds I don't know but Perry Saturn was the closest thing I saw to a dick and even then he wasn't cussing people out he was just he didn't conduct himself in an impressive way that day so but anyways this went a little long. Hopefully you guys didn't think this sucked too bad. Um, but that's it. I'm out of here. Remember, this is OTR Central, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. And, and, and the channel's still existing, I promise, okay?